as the Dean of Canterbury and on behalf of our chapter in this community, welcome to our service of Coral Evensong and welcome to all those who also join with us online as we live stream this act of worship. In our service this evening, as well as Evensong, we also have the joy and delight of uh, having our bell ringers in our midst and not just at the top of our tower, as it were, as we admit those who uh, come to be part of that great company of ringers down the ages here in Canterbury. Uh, you're all most welcome and friends and family who've come to join with you as well. And also later in this service, we have a short homily and today uh, that will be given by Martin Burrell, who is a retired uh, priest in the diocese, worships here as part of the community, and is the bishop's honorary advisor for Romany travelers and gypsies here in East Kent. And so we look forward to hearing Martin speak uh, this evening. Our choir are away on their half-term holiday, and so it's been a great joy to welcome into our midst for the weekend uh, our visiting choir. Welcome to the Damien Singers who lead us this evening. Please sit as the choir sing for us verses from Psalm 119, verses 17 to 24. If you'd like to follow the words, you'll find them on page 501 of the small red Book of Common Prayer, and we stand at the end for the Gloria.
the second chapter of the book of Genesis, beginning at the 15th verse. The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to till it and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, you may eat freely of every tree of the garden, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat, for in the day that you eat of it you shall die. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other wild animal that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God say you shall not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden, but God said, you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the middle of the garden, nor shall you touch it, or you shall die. The serpent said to the woman, you will not die, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So, when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. And she also gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together to make loincloths for themselves. Here ends the first lesson.
Mr. Dean, I present to you the following to be admitted to the Cathedral Company of Changeringers and those to be confirmed in their office. Jake Reed, to be admitted as a member of the company. For centuries, people have been summoned to worship God by the ringing of bells of this cathedral church. It is right that those who form the company of ringers should seek and receive God's blessing on their work. Will you, Jake, to be admitted to this company, devote your skill to the ringing of the bells of this church and thereby proclaim the good news of Christ to the world? By the help of God, I will. I admit to you as a bell ringer of this cathedral and metropolitical church in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. To be admitted in their office, Thomas Brett as tower captain, Catherine Hills as vice captain in absentia, Andrew Hills as steeple keeper, and Simon Lockwood as Secretary and Treasurer in absentia. Those who are elected as officers of this cathedral company are to encourage the members in offering their services in the life of this church. The work of prayer and praise to which you call people is the work of God. Will you gladly take your part in it to his glory? I confirm you in the office to which you have been elected, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Grant, O Lord, that all who are appointed to ring the bells of this house of prayer may do so worthily to your glory, and that those who shall be called to worship by the ringing of these bells may enter your gates with thanksgiving and your courts with praise. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the Lord enable you to use to his glory the gifts he has given you, and may he watch over your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. The fifth chapter of St. Paul's letter to the Romans, beginning to read from the 12th verse. Therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man, and death came through sin, and so death spread to all because all have sinned, sin was indeed in the world before the law but sin is not reckoned when there is no law. Yet death exercised dominion from Adam to Moses, even over those whose sins were not like the transgression of Adam, who is a type of the one who was to come. But the free gift is not like the trespass. For if the many died through the one man's trespass, much more surely have the grace of God and the free gift in the grace of the one man Jesus Christ abounded for the many. And the free gift is not like the effect of the one man's sin, for the judgment following one trespass brought condemnation, but the free gift following many trespasses brings justification. If because of the one man's trespass, death exercised dominion through that one, much more surely will those who receive the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness exercise dominion in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. Therefore, just as one man's trespass led to condemnation for all, so one man's act of righteousness leads to justification and life for all. 
just as by the one man's disobedience the many were made sinners, so by the one man's obedience the many will be made righteous. Here ends the New Testament reading. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
our anthem this evening is a setting of the words from Isaiah 61, the Spirit of the Lord, set to music by Edward Elgar.
In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come with me in your imaginations back to the year 2020. Canterbury Cathedral is shut. The pandemic is raging. My wife and I have installed ourselves under the duvet and are sipping tea glued to our computer screen, tuned into Canterbury Cathedral's service of morning prayer via YouTube. Just down the road, the Dean of Canterbury Cathedral, Dean Robert Willis, is sitting in the deanery garden in his cassock. It is snowing. His service of morning prayer is accompanied by the sound of ambulance sirens just the other side of the deanery wall. Inside the ambulances, we imagine the latest victims of COVID-19. The liturgy of morning prayer envelops us and carries us in our anxiety. Will we be the next ones to be carried away in the ambulance? Dean Robert weaves into the liturgy reflections of what is happening on the other side of the deanery wall out there in the world. Every morning, a few more thousand from across the world join us virtually in the deanery garden, drawn to the solace of Anglican familiarity, each bringing their private and national concerns. The dean weaves all our concerns into his liturgy. As the months wear on, I gradually become aware that something deep is underway inside me. In, ordained in this cathedral nearly 30 years ago, I had never really got liturgy. It seemed like an escape from the real world, even a luxury for the educated classes. What mattered, surely, was evangelism, mission, action. In the isolation of lockdown, in order to keep sane, I decided to learn a new language, Italian. After a few months of intense study, I discover an app, Liturgia delle Ore, the Liturgy of the Hours, the monastic daily prayers of the Roman Catholic Church, read and sung by professionals, at times almost unbearably beautiful. Suddenly I realized that some of the chants I had heard before, 60 years earlier, when I was taken reluctantly to the Catholic Mass as a child, all in Latin. Something deep is definitely underway inside me. Liturgy is taking up residence in both my mind and my heart. Am I being rewired? Becoming a priest? Four years later, as we now turn the corner into 2024, my ministry takes me off to Sweden. I'm just back from six weeks chaplaincy work there. Whilst away in Sweden, my wife and I listen again via YouTube, but now to our new dean, Dean David. Dean David is telling us that authentic worship will surely carry us outwards towards the little, the least, and the lost. There in Sweden, we open the doors of our little Anglican church to the world. Each week, someone new arrives. Tom, homeless, profoundly damaged by childhood abuse, son of a prostitute. Peter, homeless, young but enslaved to drugs. Robert, homeless, victim of a terrible industrial accident, yet he's fallen through every crack in the welfare system. Tom, Peter, Robert, all three clinging on to life by a thread, drawn into the little church where it is warm and people are kind. I am profoundly grateful for Dean Robert, 
who throughout lockdown and right up to his retirement showed me what a deeply liturgical life looks like and sound, sounds like. And I am profoundly grateful to God for bringing us Dean David to show us the vital link between a liturgical life and the little, the least, and the lost, for encouraging us to pick up the smell of those on the edge. For I am convinced that social activism, which is not earthed in the liturgy of the church, is like a ship in a storm without a map and radar to guide it back into harbor. A ship which risks ending up on the rocks. And I am equally convinced that a liturgical life that has no time for the little, the least, and the lost is like a ship harbored in dock, too frightened to put out into the storm. A ship which risks forgetting what it was built for. And so thanks be to God for the legacy of Dean Robert. Thanks be to God for Dean David. Amen. Let us pray. As we embark on our Lenten journey, we do pray for ourselves and for one another and for all Christian people. We pray that we would find our lives rooted and enriched by the liturgy and prayers of the church, but that in so doing, that would turn us outward to the little, the least, and the lost. We pray that our outward religious rituals and expressions of worship might deeply transform us from within, and that we may together know more deeply of our own need of God's grace, and then express that to one another. We pray for all those who have visited this cathedral today, lifting to God their prayers with our own. In the life of this cathedral community, today we are praying for those often unseen staff who keep the dean and chapter going. So we pray today for the staff of our IT department, working in finance, within human resources, estates and communications, for our administrative and our housekeeping staff giving thanks for each person who contributes to the life of this community. We pray for Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, for the worldwide Anglican Communion, and today for the province of the Episcopal Church of Sudan. We pray for Rose, Bishop of Dover, and for the life and witness of this diocese, giving thanks for the diversity of people and places of worship that make up this diocesan family of churches. And today we particularly give thanks too for our bell ringers, for their service to this community in calling us to worship. We think of the service down through the generations, of the many celebrations that have been marked here with a joyous peal, and for the moments of sorrow, private and national, given dignity through muffled chimes or the tolling of a single bell. We pray for parts of the world where the call to worship is silenced and where people of different religious faiths are persecuted and unable to openly gather. Wherever churches, synagogues, mosques, temples or gudwaras are attacked, we pray for healing and reconciliation and in an increasingly fractured world, we pray for a deeper respect and understanding of one another. As we enjoy the freedom to worship here, may the bells that ring out from this great cathedral always be a sign of the welcoming Christ in whose name we gather. Lord God, 
whose church summons the faithful to worship by the music of bells. So tune all our hearts by your love and your laws, that we may serve you in worship, in proclamation, in reconciliation, and in service of the poor. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We gather all our prayers together and lift our own intentions to God as we say together, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. At the end of our service this evening, we are treated to bells not outside the church but within our bell ringers our hand bell ringers will be at the bottom of the pulpit and steps as you leave this evening our closing hymn you'll find on a little hymn sheet that i hope you were given as you came in which is the bell ringers hymn and during this hymn our stewards will pass around an offertory bag if you are able to make a donation that is gratefully received and helps us continue our presence and ministry here it costs us approximately £30,000 a day to maintain all that we do in this place, and anything you can give is gratefully received. So let's stand to sing together the bell ringer's hymn. <laughs> Pray for God's blessing in our journey this Lent. Christ give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourself, take up your cross and follow him.
blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.